You are listening to The Centropic Oracle, an audiobook podcast of science fiction and fantasy short stories that make you think and feel. Devotions by Mike Adamson Here in the land where the shadows lie and lambent clouds mark a high and aloof sphere, I kneel before my sword. Tranquil waters, languid, sensuous, warm, and dark as ignorance, stretch before a hidden sun to the ends of the world. The shadows lie black, somber, defying the daylight in the torpor of their weight, and I look out upon a glassy mane under the riot of clouds. Alone in scintillant sunray paints green light upon the face of the waters, and a chorus swells from the voices in the forest, a shuddering howl of joyous devotion, for the goddess has shown her hand upon this earth. I howl, my voice comes up from the roots of my soul, out of Mother Earth, and shakes with strength undeniable. My sword lives, vibrates, warm and aware, a mighty alliance of my flesh and her steel. Down in the fens, where the stardust river greets the main, I hear the drums. The people of the lowlands call their goddess to witness this miracle of light, and I, the panther, melt as if but a shadow of firmer substance from tree to tree until I come upon a point above the estuary. Now the day is closing the colors melding insensibly from day to those of night as the sun gives up unequal struggle and retires behind those awesome mountains of cloud. I sniff the air and am glad, for this is our world. The panther's song is the echo of the forest brothers, and sweet reason is not our friend. Through the gathering gloom I creep, through the hidden ways as if in mortal sleep, down into the dark where fires flicker and the drums shake in my chest. This is the place of the trickling waters, where great trees give way to islands of grass, and the rising salt flood presses against the river. The earth beast breathes in her endless cycle, and the flow of waters gives sign to the observant in full measure. But others creep the trails this night, and I pause, sniff the salt breeze as a warm wind sighs off the main, and I hear the growl of the river beasts. Again the sun tries valiantly to escape the cloud, and in the half-formed glow I see them, painted bodies slick with fen slime as they prowl through the grasses, and wicked glints betray their swords. These are the men of Faraway, come for their taking of blood and murder, and my heart beats the faster. Best to let the sun go. It is unfit the goddess's light should look upon work so foul. And when it is gone, I move on with stealth, Let the grass bend under my sandal-shod feet as I draw my sword from her leather scabbard at my shoulder. For this is the time of the drawing of swords, and I kiss her blade as I close in with cat-like quiet upon the heels of the reavers. Now there is butcher work to be done, and my sword sings the paean to death as first one, then another falls to my lightning strokes. The enrichment of blades with deeds of valor is a way as old as time, and mine is rich indeed. A howling of power, of life, of all things strong and good, these are the ways the right find their path, and the men of far away are sorry they crossed mine. The waters of the estuary wash the blood from my limbs, and I rise, wet and glistening into the hot breath of the world. The cry of the winged ones fades as they flap to their roost, and soon the sun will go behind the earth. The miracle of the sky will be over. Yet this is a land of shadows, and all things are as one. All are shards of the same truth, and the night is but a promise of new day. In the marching shadow of purple cloud, a mighty roar breaks upon the world, and under the first few stars, high in heaven's arms, glistening bodies roll and crash, tear the languid waters with snouts and jaws. The kings of the river sport under the rim of flame where the hidden sun strokes the cloud tops, and I make the sign of reverence, for such is good omen. Onward, to the reed-built villages of the islands of grass I prowl, as the drums call all in sundry, and I see others as they come down from the forest. Tall men and short, strong women and wise, the crafty, the cunning and the driven, each with bow or sword, the makings of his or her kind. Not all may enter, only those with the courage of conviction, and many will falter at the gates of civilization. We're all made of the same stuff all born of the same earth, but each gives forth according to our mean, and when the people of the islands throw down their cry to the goddess, it is to see which soul shall step forth, 
which brother or sister of the fens shall be born amongst them? For we were all of the villages once, and went forth into the belly of the earth to grow, as the tree grows, to learn the voices of the wind and see the truth in a ray of sunlight. This is the day. The old paths seem to call my name, a whispering rustle of grasses. I crouch in the shadows of this dark and languid land, look upon the fires in the village, and hear the tolling of the great drums. The people wait, painted in reds and blacks, their powerful bodies bathed in red flicker. The thunder of my heart quietens. Soon I realize no one else is ready. None other will stride forth yet, and I shake my head in wonder. It is all so clear now. Now I know who I am and why I am alive. Perhaps others have yet to discover these things. I rise as if in trance and go forth, sword in hand, moving like a ghost through the gathering evening, and when the people see me they raise their arms and their eyes light with recognition. They would know if I was unready. How strange to return to this place, but the senses of rightness, how well I know it, how I recall, as a child, seeing others come back in their day. And now I am complete, for I have served my time in loneliness and come through it stronger. Now my sword is to be trusted, for I have won my enlightenment in the forest. It shines in me, in fluid motion, in confident stride, by strength and purpose. And as the elders take me back, the clouds part for a brief instant. The last vestige of the setting sun sends down a stroke of golden light upon my hidden hand, makes my sword a bar of fire. All make obeisance to the power of the omen, for only upon heroes does the sun so look. I raise my sword to heaven's arch as the people go upon bended knee, and I consecrate my life and soul anew to the ways of our forefathers, for they were both wise and mighty. I know. I have returned from the darkness, and as the sun goes down at last, I know the night is unworthy of our fear. For day shall surely follow. We hope you enjoyed Devotions by Mike Adamson, read by Charlie Thompson. If you'd like to learn more about the author and narrator of this story, or make a donation to them, follow the story page link in the description. Pledge your support to us on Patreon for cool rewards and to help us bring you more stories. If you would like to submit a story for consideration or apply to be a narrator, a link to our submission guidelines is in the description.